For centuries, the Anglo-Saxons have been regarded as the foundation of modern English identity, from language and culture to population structure. Yet, it was only with the advent of whole genome sequencing technology in the 21st century that their genetic story began to come into focus. Between the 5th and 7th centuries CE, as Roman power waned, Germanic tribes from the North Sea region, including the Angles, Saxons, Jutes, and Frisians, crossed the sea to occupy eastern and southern England. They established the kingdoms of Wessex, Mercia, and East Anglia, forming the foundation of England, the land of the Angles. Before their arrival, the island's native inhabitants were primarily Celts, deeply influenced by Roman culture. Genetically, these ancient Celtic populations carried the dominant Y-DNA haplogroup R1BL21, a branch of the broader R1B lineage associated with the Atlantic Celtic peoples of Western Europe. Throughout the 20th century, historians fiercely debated the true scale of the Anglo-Saxon influx. Some argued it was merely a case of cultural invasion in which a small Germanic elite imposed its language and political dominance on the native Celts. Others believed it was a large-scale migration that led to the assimilation or replacement of the earlier inhabitants. This debate persisted for decades, until the rise of ancient DNA research, which finally provided concrete and undeniable evidence. In 2016, a study published in Nature Communications opened the first window into this story. Scientists analyzed the DNA of 10 ancient individuals excavated near Cambridge, a region that had been an early Anglo-Saxon center. The results revealed that modern populations in eastern England carry, on average, about 38% Anglo-Saxon ancestry, with the remainder derived from Britain's descendants of the native Celts. The study also indicated that, in the early stages, the interaction between the two groups was relatively peaceful. Many ancient burial sites showed Anglo-Saxons and Celts interred in the same cemeteries, sharing customs and grave goods. However, since most of the analyzed samples were female, the study could not clearly determine changes in paternal lineages, Y chromosome. Six years later, a much larger study published in Nature 2022 completely transformed our understanding. Based on 460 ancient genomes, including 278 samples from England dated between 450 and 850 CE, the international research team found that early medieval populations in eastern England had up to 76% of their ancestry originating from continental northern Europe, particularly showing close genetic affinity with modern Germans and Danes. This demonstrated that the Anglo-Saxon migration was not confined to a ruling elite, but represented a large-scale movement of people, substantial enough to reshape the entire genetic structure of the region. This transformation is most evident in the Y chromosome, which reflects paternal lineages and population replacement processes. Before the Anglo-Saxon period, most men in Britain belonged to haplogroup R1BL21, characteristic of the Celtic populations of Western Europe. However, in the post-Roman era, Ancient DNA samples show a strong emergence of haplogroups R1BU106, R1AM420, I1M253, and I2A1L460, genetic lineages typical of Northern and Central Europe. This shift aligns closely with the arrival of the Germanic tribes. Geneticists identify haplogroup R1BU16 as the clearest genetic signature of the Anglo-Saxons. It is common in Germany, the Netherlands, and Denmark regions corresponding to their continental origins, and today remains most frequent in eastern and central England. In contrast, R1BL21 continues to dominate in Scotland, Ireland, and Wales, reflecting the preservation of Celtic ancestry. Together, these patterns form a distinctive genetic map of the British Isles, where the east bears the imprint of the Anglo-Saxons, while the west retains its ancient Celtic heritage. Not only did the paternal line change, but the mixing of maternal origins, mtDNA, also reveals a long process of integration. Haplogroups, H1, H2, K1, T2, and U5 appeared in both populations, indicating that intermarriage between the native Britons and the incoming Anglo-Saxons began early and continued for generations. This genetic blending ultimately shaped the phenotype and genetic foundation of modern English people 
a population carrying within them two intertwined heritages, Celtic and Anglo-Saxon. Another factor noted by researchers is the Frankish influence from the Germanic peoples of northern France during the early Middle Ages. Genetic data from southern England reveals certain similarities with the Franks, likely resulting from limited trade or migration during the post-Roman era. However, compared to the massive Anglo-Saxon influx, this influence was far smaller and left little lasting mark on the genetic makeup of modern Britons. Conversely, the Norman conquest of 1066, often regarded as a major historical turning point, produced almost no genetic disruption as the number of Norman settlers was too small to significantly alter the existing population's genetic structure. From a cultural standpoint, the Anglo-Saxons introduced to Britain a new social system, markedly distinct from the earlier Celtic Roman traditions. They organized their communities around the Tun, a village serving as the basic administrative and economic unit, where each kin group, kindred, was bound by ties of blood and land. Society was divided into three clear strata, the Thegns, nobility, Caorals, free peasants, and Thralls, slaves. These structures reflected the early Germanic social order and went on to shape England's social and political organization for centuries to come. The Anglo-Saxon culture also reflected a pragmatic spirit and a deep connection to nature. Before the arrival of Christianity, their beliefs centered on deities such as Odin, Thor, and Tiu, echoes of the wider Germanic pantheon. Traces of this pagan faith still survive in modern English weekdays, Wednesday, Woden's Day, Thursday, Thor's Day, and Tuesday, Tew's Day. When Christianity spread across England in the 7th century, a profound cultural synthesis occurred. Pagan symbols and traditions merged seamlessly into Christian rituals, creating a distinct Anglo-Saxon religious identity that bridged old and new worlds. Today, thanks to automated DNA analysis and vast genomic databases, Scientists can estimate that Anglo-Saxon ancestry in the modern English population ranges from 10% to 40%, highest in eastern England and gradually decreasing toward the west. This distribution perfectly mirrors the historical patterns of migration and cultural divergence that have shaped the British Isles for more than 1,500 years. The genetic discoveries not only illuminate the past, but also raise a deeper question. Why did English, a Germanic language, completely replace the native Celtic tongues? Some scholars suggest that, alongside large-scale migration, there was also a social dominance effect. The Anglo-Saxon elites controlled power, land, and resources, making their language and culture symbols of prestige and authority. Over time, Celtic communities gradually adopted them through social assimilation, this process reveals a close interaction between genetics and society, showing how genes and culture co-evolved to shape the identity of a nation. From an anthropological perspective, this mixture produced a unique model of assimilation. The Anglo-Saxons gradually adopted many elements of the native culture, from place names and burial customs to metalwork art. Conversely, the Britons absorbed aspects of Anglo-Saxon life, such as construction techniques, legal systems, and the Germanic sense of individualism. These mutual influences helped shape what might be called the English mind, pragmatic and disciplined, yet deeply symbolic and rooted in tradition. The story of Anglo-Saxon DNA, therefore, is not merely a lesson in population replacement, but a testament to the power of combining archaeology, linguistics, and genetics in uncovering history. Through ancient genetic data, once speculative hypotheses have now been quantified, revealing concrete figures for migration scale, population replacement, and admixture rates. These discoveries also refine our understanding of what it means to be English, not the product of a single pure lineage, but the outcome of thousands of years of interaction and genetic reshaping. Looking more closely, modern haplogroup maps reveal genetic stratification that persists to the present day. Regions that were once Anglo-Saxon centers still show higher-than-average frequencies of R1b U106 and I1. In contrast, the Scottish Highlands and Wales retain some of the highest concentrations of R1b L21 in Europe. These differences have helped shape regional variations in physical traits, kinship structures, 
and even certain patterns of hereditary disease. In addition, material culture complements genetics in telling the story of the past. Jewelry, weapons, and rune-inscribed grave markers reveal both artistic sophistication and a deep belief in symbolism. Sites such as Sutton Hoo, where the legendary burial ship was discovered, reflect a worldview that intertwines warriors and mythology, life, and the afterlife. From a broader perspective, the study of Anglo-Saxon DNA demonstrates the power of interdisciplinary science in rewriting history. Archaeologists who once had to rely on grave shapes or pottery styles to make inferences can now trace the exact origins of individuals, distinguishing migrants from native inhabitants, and even reconstructing kinship among people who lived one fifth hundred years ago. The combination of genome sequencing and strontium isotope analysis in teeth further allows researchers to determine where individuals grew up, confirming that many Anglo-Saxons indeed came from northern Germany or Denmark, just as legends and historical records had long suggested. Looking back, it becomes clear that the Anglo-Saxon legacy is preserved not only in language and culture, but also embedded deep within the DNA of tens of millions of modern English people. This imprint, the combination of R1B U106 from the Angles and Saxons and R1B L21 from the Celtic inhabitants, has formed the biological foundation of an entire nation. More than a millennium later, England still lives up to its name.